eye hemorrhage is a condition where blood vessels inside the eye rupture and bleed, leaving red splotches on the white of the eye, in the retina, or between the retina and the lens. Diabetes, high blood pressure, and eye strain are some factors that can cause eye hemorrhages. Bleeding in the eye is, however, often without an obvious cause and sometimes can occur from everyday incidents, such as sneezing, coughing, or eye rubbing. Occasionally, a bleeding disorder or an infection can be responsible for an eye hemorrhage. The most common hemorrhages occur in the sclera, the white portion of the eye under the clear membrane. Numerous tiny blood vessels beneath this membrane, called the conjunctiva, are so fragile they can break easily under slight pressure. An instance of bleeding in the sclera beneath the conjunctiva is called a subconjunctival eye hemorrhage. These hemorrhages are generally harmless and resolve themselves without treatment in a day or two. Bleeding in the eye that occurs between the lens and retina takes place in the part of the eye known as the vitreous chamber. This type of eye hemorrhage happens when blood vessels near the retina tear and leak blood into the clear, gel-like atmosphere of the chamber. Vitreous hemorrhages are considered minor, however. Some people seek medical help to excise the blood or blood clot from the vitreous chamber if it does not dissipate on its own. This type of eye hemorrhage, often related to diabetes, can temporarily obscure vision. In addition to diabetes, sickle cell anemia and macular degeneration can cause vitreous hemorrhages. The third type of eye hemorrhage, abnormal bleeding of the retina, is the most serious. This hemorrhage is caused by more than the simple retina tears that might result in bleeding of the vitreous chamber. When the retina, a membrane at the back of the eye, fills with blood due to breaks in the retinal artery and the network of capillaries supplying nutrients to the rear eye area, the condition is usually caused by major eye trauma, such as a fall or heavy blow to the eyes. Some doctors use retinal hemorrhages to identify abuse or assault victims. Retinal bleeding, however, can also be caused by disease. Extreme high blood pressure and unchecked diabetes are often implicated in retinal eye hemorrhages. Such bleeding can result in blisters behind the retina, which can reduce or end vision since the retina transmits nerve signals to the brain for sight. Laser surgery can remove retinal blood clots and blisters. It often can restore any lost sight, but not always. And it, there's a thin layer of clear tissue, which is called the bulbular conjunctiva. And when a subconjunctival uh, hemorrhage occurs, there's a small blood vessel that breaks open and bleeds within that conjunctiva. So the blood vessel, the blood with, you know, from that broken blood vessel is often very visible, but since it's confined within the conjunctiva, it doesn't move and you can't wipe it away and it's not going to come out of the eye. It's usually not associated with any type of eye injury at all, um, but it's usually noticed when you wake up in the morning and you go to look in the mirror and you see that this is, you know, this is there. So it can happen in any age group. It's very spontaneous. It happens a lot when people cough. It happens a lot when people sneeze or vomit or when they're straining on the toilet, uh, when they have a Valsalva, remove, uh, a Valsalva maneuver. So, you know, those are some of the reasons that it occurs. It also can occur because of high blood pressure or taking blood thinners. So you need to be cautious of that, too, when you're looking at a patient with um, subconjunctival hemorrhage and be looking at their medications and maybe needing to check if they ha haven't had a PT uh, done, you know, with an INR. Rubbing of the eyes can also cause it, as well as a viral infection could cause it. So if the patient comes in like this, and if they say to you, well, I did have some type of injury to my eye, then you, this is probably not a subconjunctival hemorrhage, and they probably need immediate ophthalmology referral. So th that is really nothing that you want to play around with. Um, so you want to be very cautious in regards to, you know, looking at it. This is, uh, these are some really good pictures of the, sub, um, the subconjunctival hemorrhage. I, I tried to get one that was a partial one that was full-blown, and one that was very small. Now, you can see this one here uh, on the top right. looks like there's some ecumatic, um areas going on around in the periorbital area. But So I'm not sure if that was just taking because of an injury or not. But
but um, at least you get a, a, a good picture of what that looks like. So when you're doing your history of present illness, it's really important to ask them when it happened, how long it's occurred, if there was any trauma. If there was trauma, you immediately refer them. How did it occur? Were you coughing? Were you sneezing? Were you um, straining with the bowel movement? Have you been constipated? Did you have any type, are your, have your blood pressure been high in the past? Do you have high blood pressure? Is there any type of discharge? Do you have any eye pain? And then you're going to go into your review of systems. Do you wear contact lenses? What kind of medical history do you have? You know, are you taking anticoagulants? Are, are you in atrial fibrillation and you're on anticoagulants? What kind of medications um, is going to be very important because some of the elderly patients that come in don't realize, you know, and, and may not t tell you that they, they're on these medications. So you need to go back and look at the medical history. If um, they're not really, if you're really not sure and they're not giving you their, you know, the good information, they're poor historians. So the treatment plan is really uh, very simple. There is no treatment. It's usually self-resolving. Um, the patient will need to be reassured that this is definitely a benign condition and that there isn't anything that they can do to get it to resolve on their own. Um, it just has to, it has to, to, re, to um, just run its course. Compresses, you know, sometimes you could use them, but they really don't help very much. Um, so they're not really used, but just explaining to them that, we know this looks ugly. This isn't going to be something that's going to be there for a long time. About, about one to two weeks, you should start seeing where your eye starts to go from the blood to, the, to a yellow color, and that's when the healing process is occurring. And then we go on to uh, pterygium. Pterygium, and this is a picture of uh, pterygium, and you can see how it encroaches in. So obviously these patients would, would have difficulty seeing, but you can see how it goes into the, to, to the nose. 